Sure. So the, the most common procedures that uh, gastroenterologists do, and myself, I do a little bit more. Um, we, we do upper endoscopies, something called um, uh, an esophagogastroduodenoscopy. Um, that's a, a, an endoscopic procedure that you may or may not have seen uh, on television shows and the movies, what have you. Uh, it's where we give patients medication to sedate them, and then we take an instrument called an endoscope. It's a flexible scope. Uh, it's about a four, four to five foot long flexible tube uh, with a uh, optic chip, uh, fiber optics. You're able to visualize the esophagus, the stomach, and the small intestine. Uh, we do that for various diseases. I, I have patients that have uh, foreign bodies uh, or food stuck in their throat. Um, and uh, throughout my career, I've taken many things that people have sometimes intentionally, sometimes accidentally swallowed, um, batteries, toothbrushes, you name it. Uh, uh, food gets lodged, uh, and we've had to go in and remove it. Uh, people have diseases where they bleed from varices, which are blood vessels in their esophagus, that are often the result of liver disease. Um, that are life-threatening, uh, that we can go in emergently and stop the bleeding. Uh, there are different chemicals that we can use and rubber bands that we can actually deploy in the esophagus to stop the bleeding. People have ulcers in their stomach that sometimes bleed. Um, we can use variations of medications. Uh, we have clips that we can deploy through the endoscope that can stop the bleeding. There are other conditions that cause bleeding that require us to use a laser. Uh, where we use a laser inside the stomach to stop the bleeding. Uh, these ulcers can also occur in the small intestine and various infections. Um, there's another procedure called an ERCP. Uh, the acronym stands for Endoscopic Retrograde Cholangiopancreatography. It's uh, more of an advanced technique that not all gastroenterologists were trained in. I was, um, where you're able to do the upper endoscopy go through the stomach and into the small intestine, we can enter the biliary system, the bile ducts. Uh, most people have heard of patients that have gallstones uh, and they have them surgically removed. Well, if one of the gallstones comes out of the gallbladder, it goes down a pipe called the bile duct that we use where we can actually enter into that bile duct and remove stones. Uh, we use various uh, tools that include baskets, balloons, uh, lasers uh, that we can crush and remove the stones. And sometimes we have to put stents through those. That, that requires uh, more training in our field uh, and is, uh, has a little bit of higher risk. Probably the most common procedure that we do is a colonoscopy. Um, there's a big push because colon cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death in the United States. And it's something that's completely preventable. Um, screening for this starts at age 45. Depending on whatever your risk factors are will determine how often you need to have it done. Uh, some people need to have it every five years, some people every 10 years. Depends on if you have a personal history or if there's a family history, but the same techniques are involved. We give medication and uh, sedate patients, and then we take about a six to seven foot long scope, um, which is a flexible tube with a light. Uh, and it has the ability to turn. Uh, we can use different channels or ports through the scope to put devices down that help us remove polyps, uh, which can potentially turn to a cancer at the same time. Also, you can use this for bleeding, like I mentioned, uh, for the upper. So those three uh, are those, yeah, those three procedures are the most common uh, procedures that we do. There is another uh, that we do, not quite as common. It's called a feeding tube or a peg tube. Um, these are feeding tubes that are placed directly through the skin uh, that enter into the stomach. And for patients that are unable to eat or unable to swallow, they can be fed directly through the feeding tube that goes into their stomach. Uh, conditions that involve cancers of the head or the neck that you're unable to swallow, there's blockage. Uh, sometimes people are, are, are intubated and on a mechanical ventilator during their breathing for so long that they're not able to eat and you just can't get your nutrition through an IV forever. You do need to feed the, the gut. 
And the only way to do that is to put food directly into the stomach. So that's another technique that we, we also perform.